Welcome to the Shasta County Arts Council Performing Arts Spotlight. Today, we have Cleveland Bonet sitting in with us and his special guest, Greg Takamoto from Reading's uh, School of Music. And uh, these guys are going to do some jamming with us. Uh, we're excited to have you both here. Thanks for coming in this morning. about yourselves where where do you hail from and uh how long have you been playing <laughs> uh well i um i'm original well i was born and raised in minnesota but i have lived in pennsylvania alabama north carolina um lastly in of course california this is where i met my wife and we moved up here um, and I have been playing piano since I was four years old, so a little over 43 years. I can say that, yay! I feel old, thank you. <laughs> so a little bit over 43 years. All right, yes. how about you, Greg? Um, I'm from Reading uh, originally, and then I uh, did a little stint at Chico State, and then I moved to the East Coast, and I spent about 22 years living out there and playing. Uh, 
I worked for the uh, Rhode Island Philharmonic and taught private lessons and uh, yeah. And now I moved back here in about 2018 and I opened up a music school called Ready Music School. So Ready we school. offer, thank you, we mm -hmm. offer lessons for everybody and uh, yeah. Uh, readymusicschool.com. Check it out. It's awesome school. <laughs> Wonderful teachers there. All right. Um, so how would you guys say uh, Shasta County has influenced music for you currently? I know that you've had all kinds of influences and you have as well, but um, is there anything that has helped kind of move you along with music here in the county? Yeah, I, I I would say moving here was a, a different a different scene, and I had to get accustomed to the scene here. But there's definitely lots of opportunities to play, and lots of good players out here. Um, and uh, I think it's just beginning here, you know. Um, I think that's always been music here, but I think as far as like what I'm into, jazz and and bebop and stuff, I think that stuff is like right on the beginning of of, of becoming something that you'll hear in downtown Reading, and you'll hear in bars in Reading, and you'll you know uh, clubs in Reading. I think it's starting now, um, and I'm excited to be at like the beginning of that that process. Yeah, and there's a ton of good bands out here that are already established, and they're kind of already starting to play and stuff. So it's it's cool. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of interesting opportunities is out here about uh, you Cleveland uh, you know it's really funny <laughs> I would actually give Shasta County um, like all the credit as far as refining my 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 th my outlook on theory just overall um, before then I was always a student of music so I always you know I, I was always um, learning more but um, I had already started teaching so you know the learning curve had kind of like you know kind of you know dropped off a little bit moving here and being in the presence of so many different um, great and I mean <laughs> great um, teachers uh, uh, Dr. Dave, uh, Dwayne Corbin was my mentor um, Dr. Fisk who was taught by Madame Balaje um, uh, was also, you know, it, it hugely instrumental in just like refining my overall like theoretical um, knowledge that helped me ultimately not only just with the playing aspect of it, but also in teaching um, and uh, being able to explain to my students. It's always been like my thing. Um, I had I had teachers that would always kind of explain or just like tell me to play certain things. They would tell me where C was. You know, they would tell me, you know, this is what you're supposed to play. They would, you know, as I was making mistakes here and there, they would tell me like, oh yeah, this is how you should do it. But they never really explained the why. And I, I always tell my students that, you know, um, I'm going to always explain why you are playing this note, why you're playing this chord, why you're, you know, um, playing this sequence of notes, why you're you're playing this sequence of, of of chords you know why you're playing this softly why you're playing this sped up I'm gonna give you every explanation why so you understand it completely because music to me has to be holistic it can't just be in pieces it can't be in parts absolutely the first time I met you you were playing at it's now cheesecakes unlimited you were playing with Chris Jabori. Oh my gosh. Yeah, way back in the day. Oh, and, wow. Uh, he and John Gonzalez were just saying, this new guy in town, he's really awesome. You gotta meet him. And I, I sat in with you. It was so fun. Oh my God, oh, you wow. were so kind. <laughs> just great. Just great. Oh, wow. So cool. That was, wow. That was, yeah, a, that was a while ago. That was a while ago. <laughs> that was a while ago. But that's okay. Yeah, that good. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so. Um, what do you guys, you, you, you both talked a bit about the scene, the jazz scene. What, what is your um, desire for that? I mean, you talked about doing some concerts, but do you see maybe a jazz society reforming? Because back in the day, you know, John and Chris and Steve Fisher and Jeff Jones, those cats had, a, had kind of a society moving and, and COVID kind of did some of us in that way what do you go what do you guys think about that in terms of forming like a actual yeah they got that oh, tag yeah. now oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah no, no, um, no. so uh when i met 
Greg, uh, first of all, the we we immediately like hit it off. Like this is this is my dude. Yeah, <laughs> Seriously, uh, and, and, and not even just like just in right. personality, not even just personality, but also we just like feed off each other when it comes to like music. And when you find that kind of like musician, you know, you want to stay, you want to stick with, you know, that's that's your guy. You know what I mean? I have like bass players that I I will you know I will call you know first you know and and you know and all these kind of things. Anyway, so um, but. One of the things we kind of started talking about, like when we first met, because we were like, okay, man, this this jazz thing, man, this is we're we're loving this, you know, and and um, one of the things we kind of talked about immediately was that we need a jazz festival again. Yes, we do. <laughs> and so we have actually um, put put. Um, steps in place, put things in place, and the meal's in motion right now to actually have one uh, this year on the 21st of October. <gasps> Um, in uh, at Shasta College, so uh, we are still, you know, this is, you know, we're still, you know, it's in de development. But the book, the bands are booked. Yeah. Uh, we're bringing back actually uh, one of the bands, um, um, specifically, is of the Usual Suspects, uh -huh. which we haven't heard from in a while. Yeah. Um, but we brought them out of retirement, yeah. uh, trying to bring them out of retirement, and also sex therapy, a couple other ones, yeah. you know, um, yeah. some yeah. other names as well. Um, yeah, yeah fantastic. Oh my gosh, yes, yeah. um, and getting the schools involved as well. So we want this to be a thing we want this to be an annual thing right on so well, that's the, the beginning the arts councils behind you whatever you need right. oh wow yeah so yeah we will be talking about that as well um we'll sit down and have a glass and chat cool i i i know tape, so I'm there. good all right <laughs> good I got, um, I got your back in addition i think though just for you know the the, the festival's off is obviously good i mean the idea is to reintroduce the jazz scene to reading mm -hmm. uh, but i think in addition to that i think there needs to be more um um even just on, on an education you know um, thing one of the things we also kind of talked about was like a summer you know like a, a summer program you know jazz program maybe you know to to get the kids involved like a summer camp kind of yeah. thing you know uh, i don't know what that looks like it's another another i you know again brain shall we kind of just brief we kind of talked about but it needs to be more because what i'm seeing is a um a decline it has been a decline for the last 10 15 years in in the the pushing of musicianship on 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 kids mm -hmm. you know those who actually have the talent is going kind of going wasted because there's no one pushing them to kind of like you know to you know to maybe be involved with it you know what i mean they had no idea what the what the you know the the wonders of of playing would you know can actually bring because it's not only just you know about you know being able to you know show off the 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 skill set but it also is cathartic it's Absolutely. <laughs> it, it helps it helps the soul so music I mean, helps the soul help you during COVID, i'm sure oh my gosh I mean, yeah. probably kept you guys alive i'm sure yeah we did yeah, yeah we actually did yeah yeah it I know. was i know it i know uh, to touch on that, no, no, that's good. To t to touch, no, no, no. To touch on that, I, I would say that the high schools, uh, some of the high schools, a lot of the high schools do a great job giving the kids like that preliminary um, performance practice, you know. Um, but past that, I think that they need to go have places to go listen to players, to go listen to their teachers, to 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 maybe sit in with their teachers, just to have that opportunity, uh, much like college was, you know, where you'd go out with your professor, you'd listen to your professor, he would introduce you to a bunch of the guys, and you would be part of a scene. And here, um, I, I have nothing, the high schools are performing and they're doing a good job, but it, we, we we should probably be taking it steps further, you know? And I think maybe this has waxed and waned in Reading. Sometimes there's opportunities where, and then sometimes there's not. And I think we're in a part period where there's gonna start to be more opportunities. Right, yeah. yeah, for, you know, kids to come out, listen, play, have sessions, have jazz camps, go out to a jazz festival, listen to it. And I'm specifically referring to jazz, which is a little bit esoteric, you know, which is so. It's such a wonderful vehicle for kids musically. Awesome. Yeah, and they, they learn a lot musically. I mean, I um, starting out my career as a band director, I had Chris and John. I mean, they literally were there every week giving lessons and helping teaching me as well as teaching the kids. And I think that's part of it. You're going to see a new wave of uh, band directors come into the community and and vocal jazz, too. You know, I'm a, I'm that was my axe in college and uh in terms of teaching, but 
I think you guys are the new John and Chris. <laughs> you know, the, we we, we would uh, humbly <laughs> accept that, you know, that moniker. Yeah, seriously. Oh, I mean, those men were wonderful. But you guys, I feel like you, you two have that same, that same kind of vibe going on. Absolutely. Right. The and want. Kind of, and I think, you know, eventually, well, hopefully, our students will have that same vibe here. Yeah. It, it'll mm -hmm. continue to be cyclical. something that yeah. we can grow, right, cyclical. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't want it to end here, you know. I, no. I would like it to, to just go and launch and have people be able to be in a community and, and, and it's opened up so many yeah. for both of us right yeah, absolutely mean, never would have experienced half the no. things i've experienced in life without specifically music and and more specifically jazz yeah you know? so. and to even hit on that as far as like what you were saying as far as like you know specifically jazz i always say that and i tell my students this that um I, and, and this is nothing against all other genres but the truth of the matter is is that jazz um gives you almost exclusively free range of expression mm -hmm. whereas there's nothing you know to I mean, literally, there's not really many songs or, or genres out there where you can take the exact same song and change the chords to them and still have the exact same, you know, have the same song. Yeah. And, and it'd be okay. Whereas if you take like, you know, what is it, uh, uh, Stairway, uh, Stairway to Heaven, you know, and try to change the chords on, on that or some other like, you know, rock or, um, or even, oh my God, classical piece where you change the actual progressions or anything like that. Oh my gosh, it's a no-no. No-no. But jazz yeah. is almost expected. It like, it's it, the, it takes a conversation mm -hmm. and it extends it Absolutely. Far beyond where it started. Absolutely. Sorry, no, no, that's exactly it. And so, yeah. Yeah, that is that. It is a conversation between musicians, more so than other mu musical genres, which I, I respect and went through the programs and played all sorts of stuff. But jazz to me is more communicative with the people. That's why you have to have pretty good relationships with the people you're playing with. It helps, you know, mm -hmm. just so that you kind of know where they're coming from with their ideas and their perception. It's cool. It's, it's uh, Absolutely. very much expressive. Yeah. Right on. Well, speaking of that, you guys want to play another song for us? Sure. That'd be awesome. I'm going to step out and let you go.
can just hear you how you talk to each other. I mean, that <laughs> it's just so fun, and you can tell there's a good connection going on. Um, so we've talked a bit about projects that you guys are interested in. How about if somebody wanted to hire you guys, either independently or you're, you're with Soul Punch, <laughs> formerly Nancy thinking it was Soul Patch because of the jazz, <laughs> but um, you're, which is a great band, uh, Paul Sen, good friend too, mm -hmm. love that guy, um, Enterprise grad also. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I know you guys do other projects in town and do other things. I know that you both uh, teach and I'm sure you mm -hmm. you're probably booked but I bet you you know people would love to get in and get some lessons from you too Absolutely. so chat chat tell us about your well, how you how we can hire you to do things because <laughs> money's always a happy way to keep a musician going forward <laughs> and, and that's the I mean yes, that's the yeah, I gotta make ends meet I mean that's the arts council philosophy too we don't we don't feel any artist should go unpaid I mean that's when I came in it was like we're gonna pay our people to do first Fridays it may not be a lot but we're gonna at least pay you know what we can and forward our musicians and our artists and our thespians and such you know, it's, <laughs> I, I, and I'm sure that Greg feels the exact same way. I, I, I consider myself extremely fortunate to be able to say that I am a full-time musician. That's so cool. And can support, no, seriously, and can support myself and my family with, um, with my, with my craft. Um, you know, uh, growing up with, you know, um, with like, you know, some, you know, doctors and lawyers and, and, and business people around me all, all the time and and them always kind of like looking at, you know, I, I was I, again been playing since four. Um, and so looking at that as kind of like, um, oh, that's a nice little hobby. You know, in fact, one of one of um, one of my. Um, uh, it was say extended family members was like um, I, I was at um, one of my good friends um, I think his his uh, his graduation from I think medical school and I was like wow I'm really I'm really happy for him and he was like she's like well you know you you'll be you'll be here too eventually and you can and I'm like I'm thinking to myself I'm like but I love what I do <laughs> I don't, I don't, you know, I don't need, I don't, I didn't, I didn't need that. And, and, and to be honest with you, it's not even necessarily about the money. Obviously money is great, but to say that I have, I'm able to every morning say that I am doing what might, you know, what, you love. what I love, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That is honestly the truest definition of success yeah. is being able to, yes. you know, to, to do what you love and make a living from it. Amen. <laughs> so Amen. That's, Amen. that's an amazing feeling. Yeah. So, um, uh, with that said, um, as far as hiring, um, our services, I have a studio, um, a production studio in Palisadro where I also teach lessons. Um, and um, they can get in contact with me um, on cleveybegoodmusic.com uh, and all of my services and everything are pretty much spelled out there. So that um, so that's, uh, and, and every, yeah, all the services are all kind of, you know, explained there. And you but do get, quite a bit in the community. I know you've done musicals. You've mm -hmm. been a music director for musicals. Uh, you do you do the bands, uh, combos, solo just, work. Solo work. I've teaching. done some some conducting, which is honestly yeah. for me like end game kind of like stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, being in front of of ensembles is is exhilarating to me. Um, I love that feeling. Um, and because it, being surrounded by, especially like an orchestra or a mm -hmm. symphonic band, it's just like, it, it just fills me with joy. <laughs> like nothing, nothing. It's a pretty know fun that. gig when it you really have 70, 80 musicians in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. That is a it, fun is, time. It, is, it is so much fun to, to, you know, to kind of just have that immersion. And, um, um, but yeah, all of those, those different, you know, um, um, uh, services I do, you know, provide. Right. As well. And you sing a bit too, I know. Yes, I'm actually the next song I'm gonna um, I'm gonna sing. sing. Yeah, I'm gonna Yay. sing one. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. I know. I'm Little gonna get bit. him on stage. I'm gonna direct him in a show. Nah, that's not happening. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to get his wife on stage too. Yeah, well, yeah she <laughs> might. Yeah, she'll probably do that I one, know, but right? I don't she's, know about me. <laughs> she's, she's, that we have plans, she and I. How about you, Greg? Oh, uh, yeah, you can get in touch with me through readymusicschool.com. You can get in touch with me. Uh, 
most people that want me personally to put together a band and hire me to go through my school or uh, contact me directly, I'm, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, um, I have my own personal website, uh, gregtakamoto.com, um, and I'm open for everything. Uh, a lot of times uh, we kind of play within the community, you know, so we call each other for things and uh, book each other for, for work. Um, but yeah, we're, we're up for everything. We, I love receptions, I love... We're going to Chico today to play mm -hmm. at a 200-person mm -hmm. event. I'm um, just going to be on the stage. Um, so I love it all. If you have a private function or a party or you just want to uh, have some background music at your restaurant or something, call a call, and, and um, I will definitely make the time to put yes. together something to, you know, 100% with Cleveland and, and uh, mm -hmm. do some work there. Um, it's kind of what we do, you yeah. know? Um, um, it doesn't always have to be showtime on a stage. Sometimes sometimes it's nice to be in the back and just playing mm -hmm. for people while they enjoy their their thing and add that ambiance, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it's what we've done. It's what we've done our whole lives, so um, we can continue to do that stuff. And then, um, again, I, I offer lessons at my school, so if anybody's interested in woodwind lessons or piano, vocal, yeah, guitar, no, ukulele, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, we offer all those lessons there, um, as well as Cleveland offers lessons at his studio. And um, yeah, we're, we try to do it all. As musicians, we have to wear many different many, hats. Many, many, many hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we try to do as much as we can here. Yeah. And just to kind of better the community and, and help these young guys and girls get going and, and yeah. see the. the what the impact music has had on our lives kind of expressed that to them, you know? Yeah. That's great. What do you guys, what, you want to do one more number for us? What do you guys want to do? I am. I'm going to um, do one. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, I had a, um, uh, many influences, but I discovered that Carmen McRae is actually my um, grandfather's first cousin. And when I've discovered that, uh, my great grandmother's name is Doris McRae, and her um, her brother is Carmen's um, father. Um, and so uh, my grandfather, um, uh, my grandfather uh, grew up, you know, gigging with her in New York. Actually, before he kind of went, you know, a different way. Um, and um, and one of the so I li so when I found that out, my mom would let me hear her when I was little, and I would grow up listening to her music, and um, there was an obscure song that she played that she sang um, years ago uh, called "There's No Such Thing as Love" that just like hit with me, and um, and uh, I'm going to. Uh, attempt this <laughs> and see what happens. <laughs> There's no such thing as love No such thing at all There's no such thing as love It's just a word that kids write on a wall There's no such thing as love's own sweet song It's just a rhyme that poets chime And poets can be wrong There's no such thing as love To me it's all a game They're just an hour's fun and then I run To me it's all a game There's no such thing as blue skies up above, no And since you said goodbye There's no such thing as love They're just I just jacked that up, amen <laughs> There's not one person for me, to me, they're all again, all the same. They're just an hour's fun, and then I run 
to me all the same There's no such thing as blue skies up above And since you said goodbye and left me high and dry and left me to cry there is no such thing as love